As you can see, I have opened a calculator application on my desktop. So this is a what is called a scientific calculator, which you all will mostly be familiar with. We would use this in our uh, examination hall, right? So uh, why do we use this today? Although you know calculators are seldom used, uh, especially the scientific ones, given the advent of computers, we still have these calculators which typically have these keys as you can see a number here and some arithmetic operations here and then we have this extra operations on the left side as you can guess this gives the square root of a number let's say 8 square root gives you 2.89 9 square root gives you 3 and then 8 cube root gives you 2 Six, five, six, let's say okay 65 cube root gives you something like this and so on and so forth okay we clear it all right so it, it also gives you the value of sine of a number let's say um, this will be in radians but let's say sine of 45 is so much sine of 30 is half it's taking in degrees probably that's why it's giving sine of uh, 30 was half sine of 60 is 0.86 sine of 90 we all know should be 1 okay so I, I am able to compute sine just by clicking right so here you have x factorial you say 5 5 factorial is 120 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 so on and so forth right so you have this facility on a calculator but how do we get such a facility on a computer let's say in python right this again is a lesson for completeness sake you probably will never have a need to use uh, an equivalent for scientific calculator but we are using this as an example to explain what is called the library functions in python so it is sort of again self-explanatory i'll go ahead with the code and you can guess what i'm doing i say import math in a second i'll tell you what i'm doing here right and i'll say print math log of 10 I execute and i get 2.302585 and so on this is actually the value of log 10 right and then when i say print math of sine of uh, 45 it gives you 0.85 that is the value of sine of 45 if i say sine of 90 it gives me 0.89 this is probably taking in radians and not um, degrees anyways never mind let's not break our head much about it uh, what else did we try doing there we did what is called square root right sqrt square root of 10 will give you the square root value here okay let me comment this and square root of 16 as we all know is 4 all right which is displayed here so on and so forth we also did see factorial let us see if factorial works here factorial is showing error i remember having used factorial so let me yeah it is factorial the entire word word factorial okay so factorial of 10 will give you factorial of 10 we tried doing it for 5 it was 120 and so you get 120 here the point is we can go on and on trying to tell you all the functions that are that one can realize in python but the point here is the following in the first line i say import math by that i mean math is a library that python has by default the moment you import math you can use math.sqrt16 and it will give you the answer. What does it mean? In, in a very simple language, imagine this to be a book from a library, okay, which you bring home for reference, right? Once you bring home for reference, you can open up the book and then try reading it, right? So before that, you may have to go to the library and then get it, right? You may wonder why why use this why how can how I, why I can as well delete this okay so let me remove this i can as well delete this and try executing this this i think why, why is it that i should include import math on top doesn't make sense it says name math is not defined this in let's say layman terms 
all that we're trying to say is the library book analogy where if you want to use something you must you must bring that book home from the library okay uh, you may be asking why is this even required why can't the compiler automatically you why can't your python programming language automatically go and fetch this library function as and when it's required it is generally considered very costly such a process to go and fetch it as and when it's required all right so python expects you to explicitly state that you will be using this math library function so keep it ready and your uh, your python programming language keeps it ready and hence you can make use of the functions within this math library all right in fact it has many more possibilities you can take a look for instance you can say print math pow 10 comma 3 pow stands for um, this to the power of this all right so it, it should print thousand it's printing thousand here so on and so forth all right math is in fact a very interesting uh, library if you are into um, programming that involves a lot of mathematics but if not let us see something simpler than the math library function which happens to be at least my favorite <laughs> library function that is the random library function okay the moment you say import random you will have this random library book in your house uh, analogously speaking the python programming language will fetch you the random library just so that you can use it for your uh, requirement so what, what what can we do with this you see random dot random you should open the bracket and close the bracket here all right this will give you a random number between 0 and 1 as you can see all right so let me repeat import random is you get the random library function and then you say print random in that book you call this function called random you will understand what functions are with time but as of now you see this as a command you call this command and you will get a random number between 0 and 1 every time you execute this you will get a different number as you can see right you execute this you get a different number keep executing it you keep getting a different number between 0 and 1 only right okay so what we will now do is we will try to simulate a coin toss what do i mean by that what does the word simulating a coin toss mean sounds a little cryptic let me um, type that in the comment let us simulate a coin toss by that i mean you know before you play cricket or let's say any other game that involves a decision beforehand what we do is we toss a coin okay anyone who wins the toss gets to choose whether he wants to bat or ball correct we all know that so assuming that you are a cricket fan i'm <laughs> going to use this example of coin toss so what i'll do is i'll try to simulate this coin toss using this random function how do i do that we we introduced you to this if condition the if statement i'm going to make use of that right now so let me say a is equal to random dot random all right which means this assigns a random value between 0 and 1 to a and i say if a is less than 0.5 okay print heads if it's greater than 0.5 else print tail okay so let me remove this and see what this outputs you see it's saying head when you execute it once when you execute it once more it will say tail once more heads once more heads once more heads once tail again head again head again head head tail tail you see it's actually random tail heads tail heads tail and so on right uh, the magic here is to actually you know use this random statement here the random command here which will help you fetch a random number between 0 and 1 and what you do is if that random number obviously if it's random it should be less than 0.5 half the times and greater than 0.5 half the times okay if it's less than half the times if it's less than 0.5 i call it heads if it's greater than 0.5 the else part i call it tail as simple as that right this helps me simulate a coin toss 
right and anyone who comes um, and wants to toss a coin can in fact use this program this very program can replace a typical coin toss in fact i would say it is much much more random than a typical coin uh, which might be mostly you know coins are generally will have a small bias very small bias actually negligible bias but still there will be some bias but these functions that we are using right now which i illustrated just now has very very less bias they are mostly fair as you can observe and what happens within random is a very complicated process let's not get into it but then please understand what what, we, what is the take home from this uh, um, lesson is that you can import library functions and some of the library functions can be very very handy and just now we tried simulating a coin toss before ending this lesson let me also try simulating a die for you all right okay so there is something called uh, let me uh, delete this let us simulate a uh, dice six faced dice all right so let me introduce what is called firstly import random and then i'll say print random dot rand there is something called rand int random as you can see rand range let me say 1 comma 6 let me see what this outputs rand range i made a typo uh, here rand range is giving you 2 rand range from 1 to 6 is giving you 2 1 1 1 1 5 2 1 2 4 3 1 you see 6 is missing uh, it's probably going up to uh, 6 excluding 6 right so let me check that if I put 1 and 2, it keeps putting only 1, which means 2 is excluded, which means you may have to put 7 here. Okay, I, I, I knew the syntax, but I had to illustrate this for you that sometimes by trial and error, you can get to know what the function does. Of course, you have the help file too, but it is best done by trying like this. Not always will you be able to do this, but in, case, in most of the commands, you can here do the trial and error way of understanding what it does you see six popped up just now right one two five four one three three one two two one three five three and so on so i'm able to simulate a die isn't it um, very interesting in fact we can in fact play a game like snake and ladders just using programming <laughs> right okay so let's do something more interesting let me simulate two dice that we have been playing dice one is equal to so much dice two is equal to again do the same thing random rand range one comma six or seven so we observe that it should be seven and then close the bracket you have dice one and dice two total will be obviously equal to dice one plus dice two print your pair of dice is is then i'll say total which, which means it's showing up to total okay whatever that is okay so let me clear the screen and then execute the program and this should give you the simulation of let us simulate the sum of two dice two dice six face die okay it's 11 right and then 6 and then 2 and then 9 and then 5 then 7 and 7 and 7 7 oh why is 7 the favorite uh, you know this generally never happens you know that what is called a distribution it should uh, respect of course 2 will be very rare 12 will be very rare but numbers between them will be sort of more frequent in fact the middlemost number will be the most frequent this is a very important law in probability in fact, what you are trying to see is popularly called the law of large numbers. In fact, um, um, it, it's, it, it's, it also goes by, the, you would have heard of central limit theorem. If you haven't, uh, let me not um, confuse you. <laughs> but if you have, uh, this has some link to that. Okay. So, so adding two dice is, a, is one of the simplest ways to, in fact, explain a lot of things in mathematics and programming okay so i am just trying to execute it often just to see what all numbers we get 
Anyways, I hope you had fun with this random function. In fact, I wish that you explore this random library um, uh, as much as possible and try to use the functions that is given in the library and try to think of a, a nice way in which you can write a piece of code simulating a random phenomena. Just like how I simulated a die and simulated a, a coin toss and I also tried simulating some of two die.